you were just kind of discussing how important nursing is in Islam and the, and the concept of nursing and medicine. Yeah, um, what I was saying, man, like Islam and medicine are so intertwined, right? That's why Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, Imam al-Ghazali, like these scholars of our religion, they were geniuses because they actually found the secret of the human body and medicine and how intertwined it is. Because when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about us in the Quran, He gives us these amazing, like these amazing miracles about ourselves and what we're capable of doing. But then He follows it up by saying, you have all of this because I made it happen. And you know, I'll share with you something. And I was thinking about it subhanAllah, and now that I'm thinking about this phone conversation, it's gonna blow your mind. You know, in Surah Kahf, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us a story of the youth who go and isolate themselves, right? Because they're seeking protection, just kind of like how we're isolating ourselves to seek the protection yeah. from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they seek protection into this cave and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives them mercy and He allows them to fall asleep. And they fall asleep for what? 309 years, right? So now one of the key aspects of taking care of patients in the ICU who are critically ill and are perhaps intubated and not able to take care of themselves is that they can't turn themselves from right to left. And what happens is that if you stay on one side for too long or if an equipment is pressed against your skin, you start to form ulcerations, skin pressure, like uh, skin tears, right? Skin sores or um, uh, sacral ulcers they're called, sacral decubitus. And what happens is your skin break, begins to break down from the pressure, blood is not circulating, your tissue is necrosed, right, or it's dying. And because of that, your blood supply to that area ends, the skin tears, major infection, and you die. You can literally die from having um, bed sores. And that's why a lot of these nursing homes, these, um, you know, the elderly population, they get bed sores because nobody's turning them, they're not being taken care of, they may be laying in their urine and then the skin becomes wet and then the skin breaks down and people get infection and they die. Okay, so that's, that's what happens. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it a point to state in the surah, in that particular story, that Allah took care of them and He turned them. He turned them oh. while they slept. Now, if you have no understanding of medicine and of the ICU and why you need to be turned, and you learn that Allah took care of their needs when they were awake, but He also took care of their needs when they were asleep, and they didn't even know it, and He turned them, right? So their blood was circulating, their skin was protected, so they didn't die in their sleep. And then Allah raised them back up, and then they began to ask themselves, how long were we asleep? <laughs> how many? What? What happened? Did you get the bread we sent you for? You know what I'm saying? And they, they, <laughs> yeah. they pick up the conversation as if nothing happened. Of course, but of Allah course, took of care of all of their physiological needs. Right? And that's exactly what happens to us, man. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes care of all of these needs that we have internally on a physiological level. You and I are sitting here. We've been talking for 20 minutes. And our heart has been beating every single minute. Five liters of blood has been exchanged from our brain to our toes every single minute. And you and I don't even know about it, right? We've been. What's amazing, uh, what I find so amazing as well is when we spoke to Hamza Zortis about this, and he was saying that you, you can never. You know when we get told that you can't thank Allah for the bounties that He's given you for the for for everything that you've got, you can never thank Allah enough. You can't you can't thank Him for everything that you have. He said, hey, just look at the heartbeat. If you were just to thank Allah for every time your heart beat, you'd be in minus years because you'd wake up every day after eight hours of sleep. You have to thank for every heartbeat, every time your heart beat in that eight hours of sleep. Then think about when you're showering, when you're eating. You would just be in so much debt of gratefulness just for the heartbeat. Now think about all the other aspects. And I found that so amazing. And it's so true, man. I think reflecting upon what Allah does, even what you just reflected upon there, there's always a time where it, it relates to you more. And I think now more than ever, it's starting to hit people a lot.